In this video, I want to explore a very unique group of human beings known as the Paraha. And they may represent um, not just our past, but a very unique way of processing information utilizing the right side of our brain. And it's kind of surprising to me when I uh, started to study this group of people how the internet isn't flooded with uh, documentaries and films about and videos about these people because they can offer us a glimpse into right hemisphere processing and but more importantly they're the happiest people on the planet and so that says a lot right there so in the video i'm going to go in this video i'm going to go through a couple ideas about why i think they represent right hemisphere processing why they represent uh, what how that leads to their happiness and how when what we can take from this and so first i'd like to thank people i got 500 subscribers now and um that's bigger than the largest class I ever taught, almost twice the size. And so I do appreciate you taking the time to check these out. Um, it's a very interesting way to sort of um, interact with people. And I appreciate the comments and I appreciate people subscribing. Uh, so the Piraha. Um, these are individuals that used to be uh, closer to 800. Last time I checked, they were closer to 400. So they're every bit on the verge of extinction. And uh, so our time may be kind of limited in terms of how how, um, how much we can learn from them. And so um, Daniel Everett, he was a, a missionary and he went to um, convert these individuals. And in the end, they ended up converting him. It's, and they were just such a unique group of people. So let me go through and um, explain what makes them so unique. First, they're hunter-gatherers. and Human beings haven't been solely hunter-gatherers for at least 12,000 years when we brought in agriculture. And so these are individuals, it was a great line in the documentary. In fact, a lot of this is coming from a documentary called The Grammar of Happiness. And uh, Daniel, he talks about um, how uh, you can throw the Piraha, you can throw them naked into the woods and they'll come back with food and everything you need to survive. A couple other interesting things, um, they really don't want, and so, Dan would go in with all kinds of, you know, Western goodies and trinkets and uh, gadgets and stuff. And, and he described how they really never wanted anything big, but they occasionally would want small things, better hooks for fishing and these kinds of things. And, and they had a really great expression that say, you know, you know, you almost make me want this. And I think that's really interesting. So they, um, they were, it was almost like looking into our past, like on the verge of before desire came on the scene and as I always talk about how desire as the Buddha said desire is the cause of our suffering so they were almost on the verge of like stepping over to um, full-blown suffering and so they uh, were still had one foot in happiness and we kind of jumped both into desire so a couple things again so they're very connected to the earth and in another video I talked about how when people go out in their bare feet and connect to the earth that there's a 25% reduction in the activity of the left side of the brain. So in that way, it's uh, a way for us to get in touch with the right hemisphere and how it processes information, that right hemisphere experience. Um, probably the most significant thing about the Piraha is their language. In fact, that's what the documentary and Grammar of Happiness was all about, their unique uh, way of processing uh, linguistic information. Now, if an individual has a left brain stroke, they lose their ability for speech. So right now, the way I'm able to communicate with you is I'm using a small area, Broca's area, to actually articulate uh, sounds, and we know this is language. People with a left brain stroke stop. They no longer have the ability to speak, but they can sing. And in fact, I think it's Australia has a whole uh, choir they put together, and it's all stroke patients, and then none of them can talk, but they can all sing. And an interesting thing about the Piraha is their language is set up so that they can actually sing it. So they can whistle and hum, and the whole language is very much based on intonation. And so it's, it, I mean, I'm probably pronouncing their name horribly and accurately because I'm, I don't have the tone set up. And we know that the right brain is all about the tonality of language. And so this is how we tell sarcasm. And, you know, it's the subtle intonation of what I say that you can distinguish whether I'm serious or I'm uh, being sarcastic or ironic. Um, uh, so a couple other things. Uh, I've talked a lot about the left brain being the seat of categories, and I'm going to actually do a video on kind of the tyranny of categories and how 
the left brain's dominance has caused us to get in this kind of hall of mirrors of categorical processing that's very, very difficult to get out of. Well, the Piraha have very little social categories. They have almost no hierarchical structure. They have no formal leaders. And in fact, it's actually really bad manners to tell anyone what something to do. And so in that, because again, if I tell you what to do, it assumes a categorical hierarchy. I'm in power. So that's why I can tell you what to do. And so they almost seem to have not stepped into that kind of left hemisphere mode of processing where uh, the left hemisphere breaks things into categories and suddenly I'm higher up and you're lower so I can tell you what to do or the other way around. Um, so, um, and they have n virtually no stories about the past or the future. And um, they no, have no interest in the past. And so one of the things about the Piraha that um, sets them apart is their immediacy of experience and how they live almost entirely in the present moment. And for anyone who visits the Piraha, this is one thing that oh, not a lot of people have visited them, but the people who have have almost immediately concluded how happy they are. They seem to be the happiest group of people on the planet. And so there's a connection there. And, and that's actually in the research, too. So if you look up, there's uh, not a lot of research, but half a dozen or so articles that point to how people who are in the immediate present moment seem to be happier and that kind of wandering mind going into the past and going into the future seems to be a very um, problematic if not the blatant cause of our unhappiness and our anxiety and so that's now it gets so everything about the piraha sounds like this fantasy land kind of thing but it isn't in fact, the lifespan of the Piraha is about 45 years of age. So they have a very short lifespan because they are, well, in the middle of the Amazon, they're very susceptible to disease like malaria, and, um, and that ends up cutting their lifespan short. And so here we are in a very an ironic kind of paradoxical situation. You know, the happiest group on the planet has a very short lifespan. So you kind of poses a question and I'm curious to see how you would process this. Uh, it would be better to live 80 years of our existence or a much shorter time as the Piraha. Um, and it's very interesting, too, that the Piraha have virtually no ability. Well, they have the ability, but they see no necessity in counting. And so they have no numbers. And so they know the difference. And they'll say, like, if you put a pile of something, they'll say, well, that's a lot. And that's not so much but they won't count them. And it doesn't mean they don't perceive it. I mean, obviously they know how many kids they have and all of this, but they see no need to quantify. And so if I pose this question, I'm imagining to some up here, if I pose this question to them, say, look, you could live a much longer life. You could live 80 years. I would guess that would be a rather meaningless question to them because uh, that's not the way they process the world. They don't process it in terms of amount. It's all about, uh, quality rather than quantity. So I'd be interested to hear your reflections on the Piraha and I'd, I'll put the link in for the Grammar of Happiness. It's a tough video, it's a tough documentary to find. Um, it's not uh, easily available. In fact, I ended up getting on Curiosity Stream, which was pretty cheap. Um, that was the only way I could actually uh, watch it. So um, uh, then there's a couple other uh, TED Talks. Uh, Dan has a couple really interesting TED Talks about his experiences. He spent 30 plus years with these individuals and was really the only one to spend this amount of time with this group. Um, so let me know what you think. I'd be interested in your comments, as always. Thanks.